Of course, the crew kept getting nervous on this trip because Rex and I actually looked at a map a couple times and every time we did, they'd panic and think we were lost and start piling out of the truck. Uh, right before you get to Bridgeport, there's this really interesting bridge, but they call it the Pony Trust Bridge. You may not know it, but you've seen this bridge before. It was featured in the movie, The Grapes of Wrath. In the scene where Grandpa dies, He's buried right here in front of this bridge on the South Canadian River. Route 66 bypassed this bridge in 1933, which basically turned the town of Bridgeport and Calumet and Geary into virtual ghost towns. But the bridge is still here and it's the longest of its kind in the world. The Pony Trust Bridge, as they call it, has, I can't remember how many, there's like 39 of these pony trusses. and. Uh, it's almost 4,000 feet long. It's a pretty cool thing. It's worth, uh, it's worth making a detour off of Route 66 or Highway 8 if you're out this way. I want to go look for Grandpa's grave. Well, it was a movie. They didn't really bury him, I don't They've think. They've got to have a... I, I can't believe they don't have a monument. A prop, Grandpa? Yeah. Yeah, you're like right. A... There might be a, like a... So, uh, so crossing over the Pony Trust Bridge, we headed on down the old road towards the town of Bridgeport. And um, it's actually named that because there's, there's been a bridge there across the Canadian River even back into the 1800s. And uh, the, uh, the Pony Trust Bridge was built in 1933. Before that, there was a suspension bridge that was a, uh, actually a toll bridge that the old road passed over. And back then, the highway actually went right through the middle of Bridgeport. Today, the alignment that you go down is uh, you're, you're actually about a quarter or a half mile from Bridgeport. And uh, we thought we'd, we'd turn in just to see what the place looked like. And we're tooling along and we see a sign that says Main Street. So we figured, well, that must be Bridgeport's Main Street. And so we turn in and go down like the bumpiest road in the world. Bridgeport is a ghost town basically now. It used to be on Route 66 and uh, the highway bypassed it in 1933. So Rex and I, knowing Bridgeport's coming up, we're really watching the road and talking back and forth over the radios and we spot Main Street. So we turn down Main Street where Bridgeport was supposed to be. So, uh, you know, you, you hear people talking about, oh yeah, the interstate passed up our little town. Well, sometimes it's not the interstate, it's the mother road bypassed this little town. How ironic. Continuing on over Route 66, we came across the original Lucille's. Near Hydro is, a, uh, is an old roadhouse known as Lucille's that was um, originally built in 1927. Remember this little thing here? There was a little thing in there that spun around. Yeah. You see the gas spinning it around so that you knew there was gas going in your car, I think. Oh, so they trusted. And it's still there. It's on the National Register of Historic Places and uh, has some, uh, some old uh, gas pumps out front just for the, the uh, look and feel of, of the place. And, uh, it's a, it's a nice photo op. Lucille Hammonds ran it for 59 years, and uh, she was considered the mother of the Mother Road. She, she was, this was a, a very popular stop for, for over 50 years on the highway. And at one time, this type, of, this type of live above the gas station type of building like this was ubiquitous all along this road. This, this was a very, very common bit of architecture. You pulled up under the awning, you know, kind of sheltered your car from the rain, and filled it up with gas. And uh, so this is a, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a considered a historic landmark, not just because of the woman that ran it for 59 years that became an icon of the old road, but, but also because it's a very well-preserved example of this, this type of architecture that was so common back then. They lived upstairs. It was a house on the upper story. So it was going for travelers coming through there any time of the night. You stopped in, banged on the door when you needed some gas or, or food. And then what's cool, the next place we're gonna stop up here in Weatherford is called Lucille's Roadhouse. And, and it's uh, sort of an homage to this building and it's designed to kind of look like it. 
and uh, it's a it's a modern diner basically. It's kind of fun. On the door, there was still like these stickers from back when the store was still open, and and uh, the crew got a real kick out of this one that was some kind of weird surveillance frog laser system or something that <laughs> apparently there's a lot. They have a lot of problems with break-ins because they still had the the frog laser system set up. Uh, we found the signs on the door, so we didn't even try to get in with. I mean, when you've got frog laser going on, you know they're serious. Friendly door greeter, radar frog. I have no idea what a frog has to do with infrared. Like that was to scare off the shoplifters, you know. Like, oh, the frog's going to get me. So we left Hydro, left the old Lucille's, um, and headed into Weatherford. And right as you're coming into Weatherford, you're, you're treated to the new Lucille's, which is Lucille's Roadhouse. It's got a restaurant, a bar, a little club on the side, um, all 50s look all throughout the place inside. And it really looks like the mo a larger scale model of that, that uh, original Lucille's. We're talking to Justin O'Connor here at Lucille's Roadhouse. Justin, what do you do here at Lucille's? I'm the general manager. General manager, just the general manager. That's right. How long has this place been here? Since August of 2006. 2006, okay. There's Lucille's down at Hydro, which we just saw. This place is sort of like an, a, a, a shrine to the original Lucille's. And uh, if you notice when we pulled up, it kind of looks like it on the outside. But inside, it's quite a bit larger, from what I can tell. <laughs> Significantly. And, uh, yeah. I, I don't think it even had a soda fountain at the original <laughs> one. So, so we got like the 50s, uh, the 50s diner mm -hmm. uh, 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 soda fountain kind of thing going on. What, what do we got here? What's the specialty? Uh, grilled onion hamburgers. Grilled onion hamburgers? Of course. Interesting. There seems to be a theme here with this <laughs> onion and hamburger deal. Very good. So uh, so what are, are yours the best in Weatherford? or? Oh, really? Really? Are, are you going to take on El Reno? I mean, you, you, you're not. You know, really? Are you in that league? You're, like you're in league. Episode? That, that would probably Pitch completely screw our episode up and we have to start all over again. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, no, that, so what's the story with the onion burgers? Why? Why? why the onions and the burgers is that like a local thing or it is very much so it's uh, something that uh, started when the place was built it kind of came with what happened was the owner bought a restaurant that was known for their grilled onion hamburgers so the original oh. management here brought his grilled onion hamburgers with him okay and then they just kind of stuck and everybody comes to the seals for a grilled onion burger okay cool but this isn't the only thing to do here there's no, not just right. this soda fan which is really cool right. what, what's the other thing it's like a we have a steakhouse and the lounge on the other side we have 12 oh. beers on tap we carry all three made in Oklahoma beers. Cool, can we take yeah, a look? Absolutely. Okay, let's go. All right. So this is the lounge. This is the popular spot, especially on a Friday night such as tonight. We've got 12 uh, beers on tap that we carry. We carry all three made in Oklahoma beers as eight. So what what, we, what do we got on tap from Oklahoma? You got chalk? We have chalk. We have Coop out of Oklahoma City oh, okay. and Marshall out of Tulsa. From T-Town. Marshall's yeah. very good. Excellent. Well, we might have to sample a couple of those over here. Let's, let's get started on that. Fine dining. That's right. The steakhouse. Steak Excellent. Huh? Wow. Over here we serve uh, ribeyes, filet. We serve only upper two thirds of choice beef. Okay. So you're always guaranteed to get a good cut of Lucille's. Look, moving up scale yeah, from scale. the scale. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> right. Very good. Okay. Well, let's get, let's talk about that beer again. I, I okay. Think, I think let's, we need to get back. Go. To that.